team what is up what is up what is up how is everyone doing first <laughs> really quick i'm a busy man throughout the week so uh let me do one quick thing right here before i get to everyone right here and we can get started let me check why is it not working All right, one second. I'm almost done. Let me check real quick. Ooh, I'll be back. Give me one second. Let me put it on the chart, actually. Perfect. I'm here. All right. So let's go. Let's get it started. Perfect. Let's get this started right here. So let's touch on the market first. How is everyone doing? No sound. That is correct because I was not talking. Thank you for letting me know, though. Thank you. Thank you. What's up, Phil? What's up, Phil? How are you doing? Thank you. I'm doing great. Thank you. Good morning from Hawaii. Good morning. Good afternoon. Good evening where whatever your current time zone is from turkey love to see it hawaii is crazy wow that is crazy that is crazy i'm doing great i'm doing great thank you thank you thank you hello 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 rubio love to see it the man the, the algorithm man <laughs> love to see it chris my guy my guy what's up what's up from nigeria singing for wow everyone is back love to see it three r trade today let's go love to see it great job great job <laughs> you know beef beats come on come on let's go all right let's get it started let's get it started so like we talked about a dollar of course we talked about the weekly for vi gap didn't we we talked about the weekly for vi gap and we would like to see potentially higher price off that weekly for vi gap now of course we didn't know for sure it's just the probabilities talking right there. So we had that weekly for value gap right there. And now you could see in action as well, in live action, where we have a weaker for value gap, a daily for value gap, that is not pushing price higher, which we could tell very early on. And then right there, that is the weekly for value gap we want to look to trade off of. 
Next target on a weekly basis is just that swing high, right? First targets, which I do like to talk about, is that high. That high is the first target. So after that, again, you might want new 4-hour or daily context right here. 4-hour for value gaps, continuing higher. Absolutely lovely. Which means if you didn't mess up right here and you waited and you had some patience right here on this price action right there, then you would have, uh, in the low probability conditions, you would now be able to capitalize on pro potentially the high probability conditions again. So that is looking very nice. Now, again, it is time to potentially take a step back into the market. So that is very, very nice. That is looking quite nice. Then on ES right here, ES, we mentioned uh, the daily fair value gap right there, which we had a sting into. And then if uh, I had a Discord live session just a couple of minutes ago where I talked about, I would like to see lower prices off of this daily fair value gap right now. 15 minutes for Vega blower would confirm, would be the first confirmation. Then I would want another one right there. That is something I would like to see. That is quite nice. Now, in the meantime, I also mentioned that all this price action trying to trade into the daily for Vega, that is lower probability. And the reason that is, is because that is very choppy price action. You will see a lot of the times right there. So that is looking quite nice currently. We'll, of course, take a look at this throughout this live session as well. And see if we can continue lower off of that. Same exact thing for NASDAQ right here. But NASDAQ didn't reach into the daily fair gap just yet right there. So that is still still a little bit waiting. Still waiting right there. If it wants to sting into it or wants to continue lower. I'll just pay attention to the fair value gaps that are being created to the downside. That is what I want to see. I want to see lower price of course. Dollar going higher. Indices going lower. Pretty easy. So on YM right here as well, daily for value gap, which we can expect lower prices from, which then automatically, of course, the target is uh, quite easy because the target is just that low right there, continuing lower off of that. And that is quite nice. That is what I would like to see. That is really, really nice. 15 minute ST, voila, could be very nice. On DAX even, you could also see it. And what I talked about in the Discord live session is actually on DAX, usually it's a little bit lagging behind. And DAX might actually reach for this low first right there before it can continue lower. That is the overlapping part right there. Let me actually check. That is the overlapping part right there, which it can sting into to then continue lower off of that as well. That's also quite nice. So currently, US dollar pairs have a lot of opportunity. It's just about picking the right US dollar pair. Would you pick something like Australian dollar, US dollar here? No, just don't do it. And that is, again, the whole reason wh what we also mentioned in the forecast. This is so low probability right here. It's just consolidating. We have the Mount Fairfax gap. It just doesn't have a clear direction. It's just not nice to trade at all. So you want to stay out of this. You want to stay away from this at all costs. So then you also have Euro US dollar, which we talked about that high. That is the potential high that we can sweep to continue lower. What would we like to see? A four hour fair value gap lower, which we are getting right there. So those four hour value gaps lower right now. What is the target? That low that is sitting right there. This low. So that is something you could target throughout this week right now. Then that would be the potential, of course. High of the week right there, which could be very, very nice throughout the rest of the week. It's looking very nice, looking extremely nice. And you can see again, you can see again, it's, it's very funny because you can see again how, look at this, how this top was created and what we talked about in the video, of course. Look at how this top was created and that top created right there. It's very nice. It's absolutely beautiful. Beautiful price action right now. Same for GU, where we have this formation. I talked about the daily value gap, of course, right there, which we can trade lower off of. That is looking very nice. So currently, as of currently, the forecast we had on Sunday is currently playing out perfectly. As in, it is uh, exactly playing out as we mentioned or as we wanted it to play out. Which means that if you plan something, as in you say, all right, I want to see this, 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 and it happens, that is extremely high probability because in your mind, you already have set out the plans that, and the steps that you need to take in order to take a trade. So this is super high probability for me currently right now. Really like it. Really like it. 
course, just lower prices targeting eventually that low. First, it's these lows, of course, right there. New Zealand dollar, US dollar. I am actually currently in a trade. I'll show you two trades that I took today. So right here on New Zealand dollar, uh, US dollar, I also talked about it. Everything that I currently talked about. And again, that is not me trying to boost my ego or anything. Don't get me wrong, because I'm not that kind of person. I just want you to understand that when I talk about something in the forecast and it plays exactly out as it as I I I planned or I hope that it had played out, that is extremely high probability for me to get involved. If I need to adjust and I, it sort of price does another thing or it sort of does very differently, then that is low probability automatically. So what you as well, if you want to record yourself talking uh, to yourself and you record a forecast, if you say something and it plays out exactly in that manner, that is super high probability. So capitalize on that. That is very important. And that is, uh, that is what I'm trying to tell you. I'm not trying to boost my ego or anything because I don't really care about that. But right here, I got involved. Daily fair value gap that was sitting right there. So above that high. 15 minutes, we had uh, this move lower. We had the ST. Then off that ST, we had another high probability lag lower. That fair value gap being created off the creation right there on the breaker. That was my execution. Stop loss is above that high right there. And currently, I just essentially waiting to either hit take profit, which is there, or hit my uh, or hit my uh, break even. Uh, yeah, that's about it. That's about it. So currently, just waiting, just waiting, seeing whatever it wants to do right there. And that's about it. All right, then on USD Canadian dollar, this is also one of those pairs where picking the right pair in high probability conditions is also a skill, as in. Usually we can tell, say, all right, it's high probability condition right now, but then still sometimes, and from my experience as well, I used to pick the wrong pair that I wanted to actually trade. For example, USD Canadian dollar is, yes, it's likely going to deliver towards that high. But if we compare it to EU, GU, GU and EU just has way nicer price action currently. So I would rather get involved in those than USD Canadian dollar right here. Just based on the fact of that i didn't like this price action it's very messy right there very wiki price action so i would rather trade eu or gu right there again this can deliver higher will probably do it as well but i just rather higher probability would be going uh, getting involved in other pairs right there use the chf also what we talked about right here that it's very 50 50 i'm I just currently i'm not really sure on what it wants to do right there so that's also something i do not want to get involved in right now that is not looking... Uh, I just can't really get to a clear draw liquidity. Because I have bullish arguments. I have bearish arguments right here. I just don't really know what it wants to do right now. Of course, with the dollar going higher, this might also go higher. I'm just not too certain. Just not too certain. Don't really like the price action itself. Same for use JPY as well. Again, did it do something weird again? No, no, no. Okay. Just by looking at the daily, I thought it had, again, those weird wicks. But again, this is something I would stay out. Use JPY, just stay out. The current market conditions on use JPY are absolute shit. They are horrendous, so don't get involved, is my advice personally. Then, uh, silver right here, we mentioned that it could potentially reach that high. Now, I first want to go over gold, and then I'll show you silver again. Here on gold, we talked about that high, and either we continue higher off of that, which it should have done today, because today we had the volatility. Monday, that is normal, that it didn't expand higher. But it should have expanded higher on that Tuesday because that had the volatility for that particular day, which it didn't do today. So in the four hour right now, we have a four hour fair value gap going lower right there, which is extremely interesting to potentially take a trade right there to what we talked about. Target that weekly fair value gap that is sitting right there. That is very nice as well. That is looking quite nice. Let me add it to the short list, actually. have it on the wrong list. So based on that, I would also look at silver, where we can potentially target this low right there. Also based on a 4-hour right there. Which actually, oh, it already came into that 4-hour for value gap. Let me actually look, uh, look at this. 5-minute, what are we doing? 5-minute ST. This would actually... I want to get something very clear before I put this trade on the chart. If this is not in your trading plan, then you do not take this trade. This is not signals. I don't provide signals or anything. 
this is a trade that could very well lose it is not a trade that i'm personally going to take it is only a trade that i'm going to mark up so whatever you do with it understand that please so this right there for my trading plan is a valid trade right there now let me tell you where i would place my stop loss on the five minute it would be right there one to two right there but again that is that is very important to understand right there right that i'm going to remove it just uh immediately as well because i know there will likely be some people who will take the trade and when it is a loss then i will get the blame if it is in your own trading plan then again you you can do whatever you want me opening my mt4 right now <laughs> chris watch out i know where to find you my man <laughs> no but it's just important that people understand that all right, we delivered into the monthly SIBI right now. Now, will we respect the monthly SIBI or will we just continue higher? Uh, again, that is the main question. As of now, I do not have enough price action to tell you that right now. Uh, we might just continue higher. We can continue lower. Right here, it's pretty 50-50 on what it wants to do. So also take that into account that it's pretty 50-50 right now on what it wants to do right there. Because we're in a premium. We also have discounts right there. We're pretty bullish. Both bullish and bearish arguments. Keep that into account. So crude oil, uh, we mentioned as well, this low is likely going. As in, uh, oh no, I didn't actually, I missed this to the mentorship. Sorry, I forgot. <laughs> On the Sunday weekly forecast, let me take you through the story. On the Sunday weekly forecast, we mentioned that this low is likely holding to push price higher. Then on Monday, once Monday did something like this, didn't push higher, right here, around there, I mentioned, all right, look at price action right there. What are we doing? We're not respecting anything right here. Looking at this based on a fake bottom, etc. This is a swing failure. I do not like to trade these. Look at the intention. We came down faster, way faster than we came up right there. So if we take that into account, I think, and that's what I said at that moment right there, I said, all right, then I do think that we might be heading towards that low. Now, will I take shorts towards that low? But well, I do think there are other higher probability pairs as well out there. But right there, that is where I would prefer to take shorts right here instead of longs. So targeting this low that is sitting right there. Could be quite nice. Nifty is as well. The only thing is right here, of course, the drawn liquidity was... Uh, the draw liquidity we had pretty correct. But the only thing is, did we have some kind of retracement to actually get involved? That is, of course, what we want to see because we want to get involved. We want to capitalize on the ID, uh, which it currently does not seem like we did have. So any Fervagab lower right now, four hour Fervagab's lower, daily Fervagab's lower. That is, of course, nice to take a trade off of to target eventually the monthly overlapping part that is sitting right there. That is my full aim. All right, let's see, let's see, let's see. What are we doing? EG, yes. Uh, let me see, Murphy. This is currently a trade I'm also in. Uh, Euro GBP right here. And I'll tell you the, the full thought process. We talked about it as well. We talked about ignoring that Monday. That Monday is not that interesting for me. As in, uh, Monday doesn't have the news supporting the ID. So right there... Uh, uh, Tuesday did have new supporting the ID. So I want to see Tuesday, sweep that previous day low right there, come back above it, and then just give me my entry pattern. So right there, this is currently a trade that I am in. Again, if you this is not a trading plan, then please don't take it. Right there, we had an ST, then eventually we displaced above that previous day low right there with that for value gap. That is my entry right there. Let's see, let's see. Let me see. Euro stay in dollar. Let me check. Mm, yeah, Euro stay in dollar right here. Uh, it's also uh, the thing is right here that we had a very steep retracement, as in a very aggressive re retracement lower, which I did not really like. So here I would personally not, uh, not get involved currently. I would need a little bit more price action for me personally. But again, if this is if if I'm saying something contrary. In contrary to your trading plan or etc. And your trading plan tells you to take the trade. Then please don't listen to me and take the trade. But personally I would not take this trade. And the reason why is because the aggressive move lower is there. So that is 
for me. For sure, you can trade higher time frames. Yeah, I have a few trading plans as well, just using the higher time frames. And I think uh, as well, when you're starting out, maybe it's it's a great idea to enter off a four hour value gap or anything. So that is that is quite nice actually. <laughs> uh, Chris. <laughs> <laughs> love to see it love to see it <laughs> that's funny i was just about to read the john i like it when you say love to see it and i just said it it's an automatic thing for me right now <laughs> that's funny yeah the reaction has been choppy to be honest your gbp wouldn't be surprised right here if it continues lower or anything but I'm just currently in the trade right there. The reaction here has been choppy, which I do not really like, but of course, it is what it is. It's one of those moments where you're in a trade and it becomes choppy and you're like, ugh. Ugh. That is a shame. Yeah, Don, what I do when price action is 50 50 or anything, what I like to do is just uh, sit, on, sit and observe and basically not do anything and uh, look at other pairs or other instruments now if i only trade so if i have a flow trading plan which is that i only focus on one instrument in that i would uh i would uh what is it i would potentially trade it but then it would be a little bit different as in i would just have quick scalps just in and out very quick if that makes sense all right yes 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 this is what i like to see now this is what i also had in mind at Nasdaq, I'm not too certain. Look at this fake top. Oh, what did we talk about in the video? Look at this fake top right there. It's so beautiful. It's such a beautiful fake top right there. As well on, uh, what was it? ES right here. Such a beautiful fake top right there. With daily for value gap above it. It's so clean. So, fair value gap is lower right now. That is very nice. Not financial advice. But that is very nice. That is very nice. Of course, targeting the ultimate lows. And I was about to say NASDAQ right here. With ES and YM delivering into that daily value gap. For me, NASDAQ doesn't necessarily have to deliver into the daily value gap itself. That sweep, if we could get a lower time from aligned right there. That for me is already enough. Ah, uh, yeah. By the way, if you have sent me an email, then don't worry. I will go over your email as well. So if I have not responded yet, then excuse me for that. I've been very busy, but uh, I will get over it, of course. I'll try my best. So don't worry. I do go over all my emails. No worries. Yeah, could for sure be the case, Mac. 100% could for sure be the case. Of course, we can't say that until we... Uh, until we've actually had it or until we're done. But it does look like it currently. Okay, just joined your MMT and absolutely love it. So much gems, clear and concise. You're a great teacher and you can feel your passion in wanting us to win much for you. Hey, k Trace, love that. Absolutely love that. Thank you. Thank you for letting me know. Thank you. Appreciate that a lot. Thank you. I finished the A to Z playlist and I'm planning to rewatch it. The PA is much clearer for me now. Love that. Love that, Marina. Thank you. Thank you, thank you. Absolutely love to hear it. Absolutely love to hear it. Wait, let me see. Uh... All right, perfect, perfect. Perfect, at the sum. At the sum, if I pronounce correctly. Sorry if I don't. GBP Canadian dollar, let me go over it. Let me see. Yes, so right here, I was... Uh, I wanted a, a daily value gap higher, potentially. The only thing is, do I have this on my list, actually? Yeah, I do. Yes, this is what I want to... Uh, right here, we have this daily value gap higher that I want to potentially trade off of. The only thing is, is that this might be a sweep to actually continue lower right there. That is what I'm not too sure of. As in, it's again that 50-50 scenario where I'm just not too certain of what it wants to do right here. Because when I look at this... Then I would argue, all right, this is looking very nice as a sweep to continue lower, which I would honestly almost prefer over the longs here. The reason why is because this daily candle has been rejecting lower pretty heavily. So I would prefer the, 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 lo uh, the shorts right here over the longs, which is a rare scenario right there. But again, I'm personally not, not really looking at it because it's pretty 50-50 for me right now. 
So Aryo, off of the 4 hour for Vagab on GU and EU, we could reasonably look for entries going into London tomorrow. 100%. Yes, for sure. So my game plan, what would be my game plan right now going into EU and GU? The only thing I'm waiting, I'm currently just sitting on the sidelines. I'm not really looking at price. Then when I wake up tomorrow, I know, all right, we likely have a fair value gap, four hour value gap to work with. Any four hour premium, ideally a fair value gap lower. So in that sense, I just wait for London, whichever fair value gap London stings into and gives my entry pattern right there. Perfect. That is what I want to trade. Now in an ideal world, and well, in an ideal world, in a high probability world, we do not come back above this high. We do not come back above that high. We deliver to those lows first before we come back above this line right there. So that already limits your fair value gap use in a sense right there. So that is my thought process as well. And that is the same, of course, on GU right here, where we would also not come back above this high right there. There's no need for it. We have just trapped traders. Think about it. Think about the whole theory that we use. We've just trapped traders. We want to release those, tra those traders again. No, no, no. We want to match them with liquidity right there at the bottom. Yeah, true. GBP Canadian dollar monthly breaker as well. So, oh yeah, for sure, Oleg. For sure, for sure. So, use the Canadian dollar here. The reason why I would personally not trade it. Again, let me state it. Uh, I do think this is going to deliver towards the highs. I just don't personally want to get involved in it. So if I miss a trade, I'm perfectly fine with it. And I'll tell you why. It's because the way this bottom formed right there with that weekly fair value gap. Now, do I think we will come back all the way towards that? No. But then the delivery higher as well, just here, was very wicky. So wicky means that a lot of wicks, just very a lot of wicks. Not a much, not much fair value gaps. No daily fair value gap higher there as well. So in that sense, right here, we've been had, having very messy price action right here, which means that if it does want to continue higher, then yes, it can do that. But how many hits will I actually take before it does deliver higher? So I am minimizing my hits that I take before I get the right move, which of course is just the probabilities and profitability, as in you. Ideally, don't want to take any losses before you get the right move. Everyone can get the right move, but how many losses does one person take before they can get the right move? And that is a lot with USD Canadian dollar right now, where I'm like, all right, I probably can get the right move, but how many hits will I take before that? That is very important. 7% down on funded account, 10% rule break. How deal with this situation? Do you... If that account is still live, from what I'm understanding, as in if you haven't breached anything just yet, then I would heavily advise, and this is where most people mess up, you drop in risk. So drop the risk, maybe even 0.25%. If you really can't lose or you can't afford to lose that funded account, then just drop the risk and slowly build your way back up. That is the most important part. Usually when people blow their funded account or it's not because they uh, can't trade or anything, it's because they don't stick to their risk management. Because who realistically, even if, if, if my, I don't know, my mom, my mom wanted to trade and I just told her, um, all right, you have 40 trades before you can pass this funded. So before you actually lose it, she's not going to lose 40 trades, even if she doesn't know anything about trading. It's, it's the probabilities are so much in your favor in that sense when you have risk management. It's insane. Yeah, use the CHF. It could be nice. Don't get me wrong. Could be nice right here. I just want to wait for some more price action to tell me what it wants to do. If we have a daily for up higher, that's ideally for me to get confidence to target higher. Mm -hmm. Sparta, the thing I would use the most when I have the one hour, so when I'm looking at the one hour to take a trade off of, uh, then the confluences is ideally the one hour needs to come off of another PD raise. So for example, if we create a fair value gap lower here, then that could be nice. Just any fair value gap. I like, I love fair value gaps. So that is the most confluence I have. Depends on the context, of course. For sure, heaven symphony. So right here on eu if we look at it from an and i don't really like this perspective but i'll give you the perspective here and you don't really need to understand it as well so it's just an extra confidence for maybe your mindset or whatever it is 
but I'll go over it here. So let's say that the market moves from liquidity to liquidity. So it wants to trap traders before it delivers towards the right side. Then right here, when we come back above this high right there, People want to uh, break out traders, especially and breakout traders. I don't mean your average Joe. I don't mean your neighbor who's putting 100 lots on that trade. No, I mean the big institutions, the big financial institutions that are putting uh, a lot of money on this breakout trade to go higher right there. So to potentially, because if it breaks above that high, then it should continue higher, right? That's what they're thinking. So people right there that are long in that position when price moves lower, they are, of course, uh, now in drawdown. And you can see it like a position like this, for example. Like a position like that. With a buy stop. So the buy stop meaning that the buy stop gets filled once price trades above that right there. Stop loss are beneath those recent lows right there, which is likely on the daily time frame that they have the stop loss somewhere below those lows right there with this low and that low. So any swing lows that are sitting right there, there, those are stop losses right there. So if price wants to continue lower and there is an algorithm, so we trade off that liquidity, then of course we don't want to release those traders. As in, if we come back above this high, that high right there that we swept, then we are essentially, they are allowed to mitigate that drawdown. So to get out of that position at a break even, which we don't want to see. So if we want to continue lower, then we should not come back above that high that is sitting right there to keep them in drawdown and to target their stop loss right there. If that makes sense. If that makes sense. All right, if you don't recommend backtesting, what's the best way to practice and build mental muscle memory with price action? That's a great question. And uh, let me uh, give a clear answer or try to my best, of course, to give a clear answer. So the thing I do when I'm trading is I hindsight backtest. Again, a lot of people say, oh, but you're doing hindsight backtesting. It doesn't work. It works wonders if you apply the hindsight backtesting then after that in a live chart. And what I mean by that is just forward testing. And what I mean by hindsight backtesting is you just go into price action right here and you look price went lower here. All right. Why did it go lower? How could I have capitalized on that move lower? That's all you're doing. And then once you have your trading plan and you have your entry pattern right there to actually get involved in that move, then what you want to do is you want to forward test, only forward test right there. That forward testing, that will do absolute wonders, but don't backtest. Backtesting is, ooh, it's the worst thing you could do. It's the worst thing. Uh, let me see. Silver took the orders. <laughs> let me check. Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> uh, as a newbie trader, should I set any profit targets? It depends on... Uh, well, no, not really. If, you, if you're talking about you should hit 10% a month, etc. No, not really. No. Just, just go with the flow. As in, if whatever happens, happens. If you make 3%, that's great. Because you might just be starting out. You can't compare someone's 10% that has been trading for 10 years with your 3% if you've just been trading for 3 months. Then you might be doing better than him actually because you are absolutely smashing it within the first 3 months. So, yeah. What trade you took this week? I took New Zealand dollar, US dollar, which is about to hit my take profit right there. And then, that's actually quite nice. And then... I also am in another trade. Euro GP. I'm also in this trade. This trade might just end up being a loss, which if this is a loss, the other one is a winner, then that nets me about one R. One percentage. Mm -mm -mm. Yeah, exactly, James. It's absolutely lovely. If you can understand those fair value gaps, wow. Wow. Wow, wow, wow. Uh, hi, Ariel. What do you think about how many pairs should we have on the watch list for day trading? Uh, well, I have a lot on my watch list, but I'll explain my process and why I also don't have a lot on my watch list. And what I mean by that is that uh, right here, 
I go over a lot of pairs. So I go over the crosses right there, all these crosses, and I go over the forecast list right there. Then after that, the day before, so the night before, and you need to understand my time zone. My time zone is Amsterdam time zone. So it is around, what is it, at 5 p.m. New York local time. I do my forecast, I go to bed, and then when I wake up for London kill zone, I go over the forecast list again, and I make an interest list. So the interest list is I already organized which pairs I potentially want to get involved in. Your GBP is the highest probability. GBP JPY is the lowest probability of my interest list. Now, just because they're on the list doesn't necessarily mean that they're the high probability, because in between that list, you also have sections in high probability and lower probability. And that is a thing we go over a lot in the mentorship. Hey. Take profit hit right there. Perfect. And that is my interest list. Then I start off in the morning with the highest probability pair, which for the shorts right here was Australian dollar CHF. Does this still uh, look similar or look the same as that I did last night? As in, is it still delivering towards my demands? No. All right, I move on to the next one. Is this still delivering to my demands? Yes, I take an entry. So I have quite a lot on my watch list, but I'm only trading either one or two uh, pairs for that particular day. Ooh, oh, did you hear the sound? Oh, did you hear the sound? <laughs> I did not hear the sound for myself. I have it off for myself. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry about that. <laughs> That's funny. <laughs> That's quite funny. Did you also hear my meta trader or was it only my, my trading view? The ping. The very loud. Yeah, it also scares this absolute living shit out of me as well when I'm when I'm not expecting it. I don't have my sound on, so yeah, nice. That's funny. Yeah, the trading view one. <laughs> That's too funny. <laughs> Oh, that's so funny. That's so funny. Mm, how you filled it out? New Zealand dollar, US dollar, and your GBP for a trade? That's a great question. So New Zealand dollar, US dollar. I was just basically looking at the daily time frame right here. And it's you can actually see the full thought process in the Sunday forecast right there where I go over this. And all right, this is looking nice. It can continue lower off the daily for via gap. Then I look at the 15 minute. And the 50 minute during London was sitting right there. So once we come into that, I uh, mentioned in the Discord live sessions, all right, we get an ST and we get lower, then that would be my entry right there. And that is how I filtered it basically, as in it's delivering towards my demands. And that's the same with Euro GBP on the long side right there, where Euro GBP went a little bit lower than I expected into that daily order block that was sitting uh, right there. And off of that, we got uh, the confirmation. <laughs> yeah, to be honest, yeah, the take profit it does not worry me too much. It was just as in, uh, I like that it hit take profit. Uh, of course, you, you can't deny it. As in, uh, people always tell you, yeah, you should be neutral. But of course, you're a little bit happy that it hits take profit. It's, it's of course, like... Yeah, of course, you're a little bit happy. And of course, you will be a little bit sad when it hits stop loss or break even. Of course. But it's what you do afterwards. It's how you control that. That is very important. So, uh, but it was more so that I was smiling at the, the sound. <laughs> it was very funny. Uh, let me see. When would you collapse this trade? Yeah, it's a great, uh, a great question, Zeus. And let me check the news tomorrow. Mm, Australian dollar news, Euro news tomorrow as well. This can still deliver, as in, based on, uh, say, what you would know, based on uh, order flow right here, this can still deliver, but will it still deliver? Because it, there, it's very choppy. Again, the thing, I, the idea is still there. So I'm personally going to hold the trade right now. So the idea is still there. So again, I'm personally not going to close it. When would you collapse this trade? Maybe when it's getting very late right there, then I might collapse the trade just because I'm not certain on uh, the close, etc. and the, 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 the rollover. But that's a difficult situation. 
Ask me in the Discord and I'll touch on it more. Uh, yeah, Soraka, for sure. Soraka. Soraka, for sure. No problem, Cooper. No problem. No problem. Euro Saint Dollar. Yeah, uh, Fabian. I saw your question and it just popped out of my head. As in, uh, I, I sort of went over it. Lost my train of thought. Oh, Chris, I'm curious. <laughs> I'll, I'll check. All right. So Euro Saint Dollar right here. Uh, I think you were talking about the, the what is it? The ST, this is personally not an ST I would take. If I would take this trade, then I would want a retracement and a continuation higher. So a new fair value gap, a clear fair value gap higher right there. This is an ST model. But the thing is, STs like these will likely not hold. And that is that is what I mean with combining the timeframes correctly. If we have a daily fair value gap or a daily order block that is pretty low, that is uh, that I would not like to see if traded into in the first place. We had a big aggressive reaction lower Then the 15 minute ST alone here is just not enough. It's not going to cut it right now, right now. So a retracement and a new push higher. Yes, that could be very nice. Yes, Ronnie, I usually go for one to two RR. Usually, yeah, it depends. I can also go for more sometimes or less. Really depends. Depends on the context low or context high, the target, really. Uh, let me... Yeah, thanks for the reminder, by the way, Robin. Thank you on that. ES are creating Fervaya gaps lower. Three minutes until we have that Fervaya gap. Let's see if we can trade into it, potentially. NASDAQ. Three minutes. YM. Three minutes as well. That's looking quite nice. That is looking quite nice. Uh, I wanted to answer a question. That is perfect, Heaven Symphony. That is indeed a one-shot, one-kill. That is perfect. That is perfect. That's very nice. I personally do not really use it. Uh, sometimes I do, but then I don't really pay attention to it because then for me it's the 15-minute the entry. But that is quite nice. What do you think of 100 to 1 million? <laughs> is that a series or something? Or is it like just an idea to form trading? From $100 to $1 million. That's very unrealistic. But. Powell speaking tomorrow. Let me check. Powell speaking tomorrow. Uh, mm, mm, no. For me it's fine to trade that day. Maybe during that time. But 4pm I'm not even actively trading anymore. So uh, for me to trade that day. That is fine. That is fine. Uh, 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 for sure, uh, Rubio. That could be very nice, actually. But trapping traders, that concept that, that we went over today, that might actually be a great video idea as well. Account swap free. Not too certain, actually, my friend, if, I, uh, if my account is swap free. But I don't think so. No, I don't think so. I don't know. I usually don't hold overnight. Uh, mm -mm, mm -mm, mm -mm. Swing trade CPI. If my trade ID is above the 4 hour, uh, as in I enter above the 4 hour, 4 hour and above my entry, then I would be fine with entering a swing trading CPI. When you'll check your email, my email, I have to do some taxes, believe it or not. I have to do some taxes uh, today after I go with my Discord, after later tonight, my time, I go with my email. And then. Next day, tomorrow as well, I'll go from email, etc. But taxes. Taxes are a pain in the ass. Uh, mm, 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 mm. Let me see. I do wonder what Silver is doing. Currently not continuing lower by the looks of it. Might still do it, of course, but... I'm so high after win, like I'm another person. It's not too bad, Gabriel. Like people will tell you a lot of the times uh, that being happy after a win is really bad. Like you should never do it, or you should never get happy. Like you can be satisfied after a win, 
but if you're really happy just know that i would advise to not rush back into the market because if you're really happy usually why people tell you that in the first place you should not have that is because of the fact when you get really happy you you, you also tend to get overconfident with your trades so the, the next uh, time the next trade you think all right i was really happy so what can happen now and then if it's a loss then the pendulum swings the other way and then you get really sad so again that is where you need to control that like i wouldn't say don't be happy but i would say control that be aware of the fact that you're really happy that is something yeah exactly cooper so that is definitely something to to be aware of no tax for trading, but everything else is it's some shit. <laughs> uh, yeah, to be honest, the taxes here in the Netherlands are not that nice as well. I mean, I mean, I can't, I can't complain, but it's just, you know. Uh, I would never try to avoid tax, but I would realistically be able to pay your mentorship in crypto. <laughs> you can pay my mentorship in crypto. Unfortunately, that also goes to the tax man. <laughs> Uh, I guess zero tax because they don't tax on losses. Oh, <laughs> uh, that's funny. That's funny. I'm sorry. I'm not laughing at you. I'm just, that is funny. That is funny. Mm -mm -mm. All right. Currently, I will end it here. And I've talked about everything that I wanted to talk about as well. We talked about, uh, of course, the fake bottom, fake tops as well. What we are expecting for the rest of the week. Yes, this is currently for the rest of the remainder of today. I'm really interested in looking at a potential trade off of here, right there. Uh, ES, NASDAQ, and YM right there. They are looking really interesting to potentially take a trade off of lower right there. If you're in the mentorship, you can potentially expect, if it does deliver, you can expect right there uh, a live entry uh, breakdown as well. So stay on the lookout for that. For everyone that has sent me an email, of course, I will go over as well. Uh, I will go over uh, the emails as well. Don't worry. I will see your email. Don't worry. All right. Perfect. Thank you, everyone. I'll see you at the next one. Thank you. Love you.